we'd like to know how to calculate this derivative matrix that gives us the linear approximation. The derivative matrix turns out to have as its entries every single possible partial derivative of every output of the function with respect to every input. So all the ways that we can combine those, we throw those into a grid of numbers. So this is sometimes called the Jacobian matrix, and it has the same number of rows as outputs and the same number of columns as inputs. So let's go over an example of calculating this Jacobian matrix. Here we have a function f. f has three inputs, x, y, and z, and they're listed in a row here, and it also has two outputs. These functions, x squared cos y plus sine z and x y squared z cubed. The derivative matrix that we produce is going to combine all the possible ways to take a partial derivative of one of the outputs with respect to one of these inputs. So each row goes with an output and each column goes with an input. So for example, the inputs are x, y, and z. The first column is the partial derivatives with respect to x. The next column is the partial derivatives with respect to y. And the third column is the partial derivatives with respect to z. So for example, this entry right here is the x derivative because it's the first column of this function because it's the second output. That's why it goes in row two, column one. And similarly, this one over here is the z derivative of the first output because it's in row one, column three. That, by putting all of those together into this derivative matrix, we get the matrix that's going to play a role in our linear approximation. The linear approximation to a function is given by the following formula. It's supposed to look like the old classic, our function f is pretty close to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. The way that it changes is in the way we think about the components of it and in what all these symbols mean. So over here, x and a are vectors. Specifically, they're column vectors. x is the matrix, x is the column vector of all of our inputs, and a is the point we're looking at. This here is the value of the function at a. This here is the derivative matrix at a. In between these two, we're doing matrix multiplication. And this gives us our formula for the linear approximation, the closest possible linear function that we can get to our original as we approach the point A.